In this video, we're going to be talking about measures of association for cross tabs, and particularly, we're going to be talking about lambda and gamma. So let's go ahead and get our measures of association and what do they do. So measures of association for cross tabs are statistics that help us to evaluate the relationships between the independent and dependent variables. Um, they give us a way to objectively measure how strong the association is or how strong the relationship is. So measures of association have a range between negative 1 and positive 1. The closer to positive 1 or negative 1 the value is, the stronger the association, the stronger the relationship. And the closer to 0 the value is, the weaker the association or relationship. So if you were to look at measures of association along a number line, what you would see is that we go from negative 1, um, a very strong negative association, to 0, which is no association at all. And then we continue on the positive side to a plus 1, which is a strong positive association. A negative 1 indicates that for each kind of um, move in the independent variable, we have a similar or exact move in the dependent variable. So it's a one for one. With every change in the independent variable, we see a change in the dependent variable. Now here I have moderate as being somewhere around 0.75, somewhere between 0.5 and 0.75, and then weak being around 0.25. Now in the social sciences, um, we have a little more kind of leeway here. Um, because in the social sciences, you don't have a lot of really strong associations that are down here at the one uh, negative or positive. Um, and that's just because there are so many things that influence a relationship between two variables. There's lots of outside factors. So oftentimes, we think of kind of 0.25 as being more moderate. And we think of, um, you know, anything above 0.5 as being strong. And then weak is kind of anything below 0.1. And this is on both the uh, positive and negative side. And so in social sciences, the way that we describe strong, moderate, or weak is a little bit different than um, in other fields. So measures of association, like I said, there are different types of measures of association. We're going to talk about two in particular. Now, measure of association for nominal level variables, so those variables that don't have any sort of um, order to the, the categories, those, vary, those do not have a positive or negative because there's no direction to the, the relationship. So the positive or negative only goes with the measure of association for ordinal and numeric level variables. Um, for nominal variables, it's just going to be between 0 and 1 without a positive or negative. So our measure of association that we're going to use for nominal level variables is lambda. So we're going to use lambda whenever at least one of the variables is nominal. So even if you have one variable that is ordinal or numerical, you're still going to use lambda um, because you can't have a direction to the association. So how do we interpret lambda? What does lambda mean? What does that value between 0 and 1 mean? Well, lambda is a proportional way of thinking. And so the number for, that we calculate for lambda can be turned into a percent um, by multiplying it by 100. And so basically, lambda tells us that we make whatever the lambda value is that we calculate, fewer errors at guessing the dependent variable if we know the association between the two variables than if we don't know what it is. So basically, lambda tells us um, how much better we are at guessing the dependent variable if we know the independent variable. So um, let's go ahead and do an example. And then we'll start with the, start with the um, computation and the equation. So the equation for lambda is down here at the bottom. Um, it is lambda, and you'll notice that's the Greek notation for lambda, and it equals something called E1 minus E2 divided by E1. So the trick here is really just figuring out what E1 and E2 are and remembering those. So the way that we do this is by looking at our cross tab, and we're going to look down the total column on the right side of the table to find the highest frequency for the dependent variable. And then we're going to subtract that number from n, and that's going to give us E1. 
and then E2 is going to be calculated by taking the n and subtracting the highest frequency in each column of the independent variable. So let's go ahead and do an example of that. Here we have a frequency or, uh, sorry, cross tab. This is respondent sex and is life exciting or dull? And so to calculate E1, we're going to take N, which is 980. N is always going to be this number in the bottom right corner. And we are going to subtract the highest frequency in the total column. So for E1, we're going to look at this column here. We're going to go down and find the highest frequency, which is here, 505. So we're going to take 980 minus 505, and that's going to give us 475. Um, and then to get E2, we're again going to take N, and we're going to subtract. So we're going to subtract the uh, highest frequency from each category of the independent variable. So E2 is going to be found using our categories male and female. So we're going to go down and look at for the highest um, N, or the highest frequency, not percent, frequency. So we're going to have 213 for the male column and then 305 for the female column. So we are going to take our N, which is 980, and we're going to subtract 213 and then subtract 305. And that is going to give us, uh, let's see, 400 and 62. So these are our E1 and our E2. So now we're going to put those into our equation for lambda. So lambda, do this in blue, lambda equals E1 minus E2 divided by E1. So E1 is 475. We're subtracting 462 and dividing by 475. So that's going to give us um, a 13 over 475, which equals 0 0.027, or if we round to two decimal places, 0 0.03. Sorry, this is at the very bottom. I didn't really use my space well. Um, but 0 0.03 would be our lambda. Or again, if you round to three decimal places, it would be 0 0.027. So how would we interpret this? Here's an example of an interpretation for lambda. We would say that for the variable sex and is life exciting, the measure of association lambda with a value of 0.027 tells us that we make 2.7% fewer errors at guessing the dependent variable is life exciting if we know the association between the sex of the respondent than if we don't know what it is. This is a weak value and indicates that there may be a better predictor of whether one feels that life is exciting or not. So the key pieces here are that we are stating the value of lambda. We're telling the percent that it makes us better at guessing. We are restating our variables, both here as well as here. And then we're saying whether or not it's a strong or weak relationship. So those are the parts that you're going to want to focus on. Is it a strong or weak relationship? Um, what does that look like? So that is our interpretation of lambda.